Hey guys, welcome back. It's Tabitha here with Nick Harper Manor. I hope you guys are having an amazing Monday. I hope your weekends were awesome. Um, we played with Shrinky Dinks. We, what else did we do? Played some Monopoly. <laughs> Haley's really talkative today. <laughs> Yeah, but welcome back. Thanks, guys. I've got Haley here with me today. She is uh, she's being very weird today. I think we've just spent too much time together. What do you think? No. No. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks to Happy Groundhog Studio, Twisted Visions Media for helping us out today. We have switched completely to YouTube for our playbacks. Um, we had you know, been posting the videos here after our live sessions and we had them, um, you know, just kind of in the feed. So you'd come to our Facebook page and then you'd have to scroll down and find the video you were looking for. This was causing people apparently so many issues trying to find the videos. Um, the videos section wasn't loading chronologically for a lot of people. So we switched it all to YouTube. That's one concise place to keep it all. You guys can find all of the tutorials um, about 20 minutes after the daily live ends. It'll be loaded up to YouTube. That's where we'll have it there waiting. Um, Tom will get it right up and it'll be there probably if we end around two, it'll be up there, you know, 2.20, 2.30 at the latest. So if you guys are watching on a replay, you'll go to our YouTube channel now. And that is Made with Mick Harper on YouTube. And we've got it linked in the FAQs. We've got it linked in the Messenger FAQs, the little automated responses, if you guys look there. So if you have any trouble finding them for future playbacks, just check there. Um, subscribe to that YouTube channel so that you see the notifications when we put new videos up as well. So we think this will be a little bit easier, a little bit nicer for everybody. So how was everybody's weekend? Miss, do you have anybody uh, chiming in from anywhere special? We do. Uh, we actually have a birthday girl, Annabelle, in Maryland. Happy birthday. And Briley from Texas is also her birthday. Awesome. B and Alice are in from New Jersey. Um, the Gardner kids in Delaware. Hi, yes. guys. Then we have friends from South Carolina and New Mexico and Florida and Georgia. Hello. And everybody is super excited to get painting on the beach today. Yay! So, yeah, we're going to, you know, in lieu of spring break, it might have been some people's spring break. We know it was, uh, it was your guys' spring break, right, Missy and yeah, Abel? We were and, to be in Florida on the yeah. Beach right now. <laughs> so, we thought we would just, you know, paint where we would like to be. Sometimes visualization um, can be such a strong therapeutic thing. And when you are painting um, a place, it is a really, you know, it's a nice way to actively visualize and it might cheer you up. Let me know today if it cheers you up. I think it's going to feel pretty bright and sunny in my soul today. So I hope it helps you guys out too. Um, we are going to be listing week five uh, projects and supplies sometime this week. So yes, we will be doing a week five for those of you that have asked. It will be, um, the projects will be listed sometime this week and it'll be up on the blog like always. I'll post and let you guys know here on Facebook when it is. But if you want to see when that supply list and the project list goes live, make sure that you subscribe to our email. So you're going to do that by going to our website and going all the way to the bottom and then a little box will pop up that says subscribe. Throw your email in there and you'll be on our email list and you will um, get the email that the blog post has been added and you can just pop right on there and order what you need. So today we are going to be doing a beach scene on acrylic, um, on a canvas, with acrylic on a canvas. So I'm going to be doing mine in 11 by 14 so that's a little bit easier for you guys to see. Haley is doing an eight by 10, like what I've suggested for you guys to do, our supplies that we need today. We need brushes, just a variety of brushes. I always have my little brush cup with lots of different things out there. Um, a water basin, a palette or a plate, whatever you have. And then um, some acrylic paints, just a variety of colors. You guys, your sunset, um, you're, you may not even have a sunset. You may have a bright sky on the beach. You may have a nighttime beach. You may have a sunset beach, whatever you guys are into. I just have a variety of colors. Um, 
the primary colors, some secondary colors too. So just a good variety. I also have a pencil because we're going to do a horizon line. We don't need a ruler or anything like really strict with that, but we are gonna talk about a horizon line. So um, let's go ahead and get started. You ready? Yeah. Yeah, all right. So with acrylic and with canvas, we've been using you know a pretty decent size brush to dip it in water and just get it kind of ready to rock and roll. We're wetting it down just a tiny bit. You definitely don't want pools of the water on your canvas. You just want to make it a little bit wet so it can flow. This helps kind of prime your canvas a little bit. And we just want it to be nice and just nice and damp, no, no standing puddles or anything. So we'll go ahead and do that and we'll give that a second to dry up while we throw some colors on our palette. So for me, I think I'm probably gonna do kind of like a sunset sky. So I want to put some blue for my water. And Haley, you can uh, get yourself started with whatever you'd like, darling. I'm gonna do some blue and make sure those acrylics, if they've been sitting for a little bit, make sure you shake them so you don't get big clumps or anything in there. I'm gonna throw some turquoise. If you don't have turquoise, you just make that with blue, white, and a little bit of green. So how are we doing guys? Did anybody come up with any, uh, did anybody tell you anything fun they did over the weekend? Some people did shrinky dinks. <laughs> Yay! We love doing shrinky dinks. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. That was in the middle of our living room, so. A lot of people are excited to tell you that they're coming, they're here for week three and Yay. they've been doing it the entire time. Yay. A lot of friends. Thanks guys. Doing that. Awesome. That makes me very happy. I love that you guys are loving it. I hope art is helping. Emily from Utah said that they actually had snow last week. So they're oh really even more excited to, to do a beach today. Oh my goodness some snow. I'm really glad that is gone for us, I think. I hope. You never know here in Ohio. Ohio, uh, so my birthday is April 25th, which is coming up, you know, kind of soon. But in Ohio, it has, we've done slip and slide outside on my birthday. We've done, um, we've had snow, like actual, like people in snow boots um, walking up to the front porch to drop their kids off when I was a kid on my birthday. So you never really know what you're gonna get here in April. That's for sure. April 25th. April 25th. Tom <laughs> likes to say that that's the Miss Congeniality Miss Day. Miss Congeniality, because it's not too hot. It's not, not too, too hot, cold. Not too All cold. you need is a light jacket. <laughs> <laughs> Describe your, your Describe favorite date. Describe your ideal date. Your ideal date. <laughs> <laughs> Tom loves a good rom-com. So hopefully uh, there are some other people out there that can relate to that one. <laughs> I'm just throwing some um, colors that I want to use out here on the palette. Nothing. Mine's going to be kind of like rainbowy. So you guys put whatever you want on yours. The yellow is not working. The yellow is not working? No. So here's what you do. You take the lid off and you put a little bit on your palette that way. Okay. I know. Some of our friends over the weekend did virtual play dates with cousins. Oh, cool. They played Monopoly. Yeah. There was a, there was all sorts of, there's a virtual sleepover. Oh my goodness. What time do you shut that off? Like, <laughs> I don't know how that works. Yeah, that sounds fun though. That sounds really fun. Florida is just starting online schools today. Oh, hey Florida. We have a lot of Florida friends. Yeah. Us that, I believe. Yeah. Well, I hope you guys enjoy it. I enjoy having you guys. I really love looking through the pictures you send me. So today, your pictures, if you save them, you know, if you want to send me some pictures, um, Missy and I go through them every night, and the hashtag is made with Mick Harper. So we hope to see all your happy little beaches under the hashtag made with Mick Harper here on Facebook and Instagram. All right, so I have a pretty, you know, I might need more brown than this. I have a pretty good array of colors out here. And we are going to go ahead and get started. Now, hopefully, you guys, you may have some uh, a paper towel or an apron on that you're going to wipe on. You're going to see me wipe my 
brush on my leg because that's just what I do. I have painty jeans, just like my least favorite, or maybe they, sometimes they are my favorite, but they're just like a comfy pair of jeans that are kind of ruined. Um, and then I throw a little dish towel on my legs and I wipe my, wipe my brush and my hands off on my painty little nasty dish towel. So when you see me wipe on my pants, don't you do that unless you have an apron on or something, uh, maybe like your napkin down there or something. That's not a, that's not the way we do unless <laughs> that's what you guys are prepared for. All right. So I've got all my paint out ready to kind of rock and roll, but we're going to talk about putting our horizon line on this. So the horizon line for a beach scene or any kind of landscape is where the sky meets the land. So it's just going to be like where the sky and the earth touch. So it's always going to be a horizontal. It's always going to be right across, but it doesn't have to be at any particular part. Um, if you wanted like really big sky, your horizon line would be closer to the bottom. If you wanted um, to show a lot of the waves in the ocean in this and a little bit of the sand, I'm going to show you guys how to do a palm tree. We're going to throw a little crab and stuff in there. If you want to leave a lot of room for like your sand and things going across the bottom, you might move your horizon line a little bit higher. If you really, really love the sunset of the beach and that's what you want to focus on, you want yours to really portray like a really vivid sunset and you want to put some clouds and stuff in there, give yourself a little bit more sky. But you determine what amount of sky and land or not actually land because it's the ocean but sky and earth is appropriate for your painting so i'm going to throw mine about a little above halfway is kind of where mine's going to go and i'm just really lightly going to throw just a little bit of a line on there with graphite and it doesn't have to be perfectly straight i mean ideally horizon lines are perfectly straight across but i don't really do a lot with rulers unless I'm doing like serious line work but I'm just gonna throw my little I'm gonna throw my little horizon line in there and that's gonna be where I start so I'm going to start with my sky um, I'm just gonna take it from the top down and we're gonna work through it so I want my sky to be kind of like bluey turquoise and fade into like a little bit of like coral and um, maybe like a bright white kind of sunset, a, a yellowy bright sunset. So you're going to see me work with the turquoise a lot and then add a little bit of that pink in there sporadically and then fade it down to like a pinky orangey coral color with that bright yellow in there. So we're going to work on that now. I'm going to take my brush and wet it a tiny bit. Not a tiny bit. I'm just going to scrape the water off. So I'm going to wet my brush down and I'm going to grab just you know, a little bit of blue because that turquoise isn't going to be, it's not going to be a solid color. The sky is not normally, you know, one solid color when you're trying to make a sunset. I've had a couple questions about whether it's a landscape or portrait. So I a landscape. You can't kind of tell um, with, the, with the way you're, um, the way a, the camera's hitting your. Oh, okay. So a landscape is really the orientation that you can use. Um, for something that you want to be wider. It's really up to you guys how you paint this. If you wanted to focus more on the foreground and you wanted to give yourself a lot of space, you could do it portrait orientation, but landscape can mean two things. It can mean it's showing the earth, it's showing um, something in nature, that means landscape, but then also the orientation means landscape too. So landscape is gonna be wider and shorter. So that's landscape orientation. Portrait orientation is tall. Just think it's portrait because people's heads and shoulders were fitting in there when they were, you know, painting portraits of people. You didn't necessarily need it to be wider. So um, the wider landscape orientation was really just so that you could fit more of what's going on out in nature out there. So yeah, it's really up to you. It's up to you guys how you do it, but I'm doing mine in landscape orientation. So I'm just adding a little bit of water to thin this blue out. Start at the top with the blue. And then I'm going to start throwing my turquoise in here. And you guys, I want you to take lots of liberties with these colors. You don't have to do these colors. This is whatever it looks like to you. So I'm going to start kind of running my turquoise into my blue. And you could do it very like, you know, blue to turquoise to 
to green or whatever colors you want, but I want mine to be, you know, kind of intermingling. So I'm just running this paint back and forth. And if there's a spot where I feel like it's getting a little bit too, um, if it's a spot where I feel like it has too much blue, I'm kind of like pulling some of the turquoise up. If it's got too much turquoise, I can pull a little blue down. I can also grab some of that blue up here at the top and kind of put it through the turquoise. But I'm just thinning it out and running these colors until the paint is off my brush pretty much to where it's not putting any more on there. And then I'm going to start putting some of this coral in here too. So if this coral, if you're doing the same colors that I'm doing, if this coral starts to run into your turquoise and make like a muddy color, um, you can always go back over after that dries a little bit and throw some other colors in there with it. Um, you can throw that turquoise back over top. You can even kind of put a little bit of a cloud over the edge of it if it's starting to muddy it. Then I'm gonna take a little bit of coral and kind of, so you can just go back and forth and build some of that in. Sunsets are so easy because there's no right or wrong way to do it. I mean, it's just sunsets are different every single day, every single area of the world. There's no right or wrong sunset. There's no right or wrong sky. It looks different all over the place. So I'm going to start building a little bit of orange into here because I want orange up against the bottom of my horizon. And basically, I'm just, you know, running these colors into each other. If someone doesn't have a coral color at home, what, what could they mix that way? So you're going to make, if you have a pink, you're going to take your pink and you're going to add some orange into it. If you don't have a pink, you're going to take red, a little bit of white, and a little bit of orange. Or you can take red, white, and a little touch of yellow because red and yellow make orange. But basically, you're just going to bring some orange or a small amount of yellow into that. And you're going to take it down a notch with the white. And that's going to make a good coral color. How are you doing, girl? Oh, yours is pretty. It's like a stormy sky. I like it. All right. So I'm going to let this dry up here. I'm not done with my sky, but I'm going to let it dry for a little bit. And I'm going to start on my actual ocean. So for the ocean, the further away that it is, is where it's going to be darker. It's going to be lighter as it comes towards us because you're going to have the more, the most color out in, well, not necessarily the most color, but it's going to be darker the further out it is. The deeper the water, the darker it is. So you're going to have your darker colors in the back, and you're going to kind of take it more towards the front with your lighter colors. Um, I do want to sketch myself. I don't want my, my beach part to be straight across. Um, I want the water to look like it's kind of like flowing in, and I want my little, my little bubbles and my sea, um, sea spray, the kind of the little edges of the wave to kind of come from the bottom. So I'm going to give myself a little reminder here, a little reminder line of kind of where I want my, my waves to end. And I'm going to do that kind of like on a diagonal. One, just because it makes your, it makes your piece look interesting. It, it's not, you know, three horizontal lines. It just really angles it and makes it a little bit more visually interesting. But you don't have to do that. You do it however you like. So I'm going to take my blue and I'm gonna add a little bit of black into it because I'm gonna give myself a deeper blue out in the very back of my ocean. So I'm just taking a little touch of black and adding it to this blue, just to make it more like a denim color, more, um, you know, in the neighborhood of like a navy or a denim, not quite navy, but just a deeper blue. And then, um, I usually, when I'm trying to do a straight line, I kind of angle my, angle whatever my surface is, and I just kind of go across and give myself just that nice little line there. Okay? 
And I do that with my bigger brush and I do that kind of on its side. And then I can go back through and I can wipe off the rest of that paint off my brush. And you're gonna see it's kind of darker back here than maybe I want it to be. And I'm not going with this, I'm not gonna keep everything in line with this. You'll see how we kind of break this up here a little bit. And this is, you know, this is one of those projects that could be for parents. This one is really, it is multi-generational. It spans ages. Little kids can really focus on just putting a sky and learning what a horizon line is, putting um, some water in there, and then creating a foreground to kind of learn about perspective. Um, they don't have to do as much shading. They don't have to, I mean, nobody really has to do any of it. But this is one that you can really amp up for older kids and adults too. It's one that um, I would definitely teach for an adult paint night too. So, but I think kids are capable of big things if we let them, um, you know, just experiment and play with art and learn about these concepts. They can carry it into all sorts of other art projects too. So I'm going to take some regular blue, just the out of the bottle blue, and I'm going to start mixing that in to the darker blue that I had back there. And I'm going to push that pretty high up against that horizon line that I just made. Shannon would like to know where you get some of your ideas from. You know, so this one, I just, I was like, I want to paint a beach because I want to be on the beach. So that was out of my head. But I am an art book junkie. I love art books. I love, um, my Instagram is just full of other artists, watching other artists work. So I think subconsciously, a lot of it probably comes from there. I love Pinterest. I love, I love anything that showcases people being creative. But I really, like, I love to just get one of my art books and just, sit in my big comfy chair and go and leaf through art book pages, um, pro art project books and art history books too. It's kind of weird, but I love art history books. So I'm going to take some more of this blue and I'm going to start adding some white into it. I know when we did peg dolls, we talked about, you know, the ombre and things like that. And that's kind of what we're doing here. We're just fading colors through. So it's really therapeutic. It's fun fun to take the colors and just make them mix into each other. Acrylic's so fun for that. I'll take some more blue and some more white. And if you get some of these little yucky acrylic bookers, as we call them, you can just throw them off to the side. And you can see, I'm just kind of like wiping and brushing until the pigment stops coming off. So I've got really, you know, big hatch marks here where the, the paint is just running off my brush and I just keep kind of brushing it through until it's off. And then I don't have to really wash my brush. I can just dip into the next color. So I'm gonna throw some turquoise in here. How you doing girl? Good. good, good. That looks beautiful. You did a great job. Thank you. You are welcome. Haley with her, you know, I don't even know if it's British accent. She just has a weird little thing she does when she's talking lately. All right. Some more turquoise. What colors is everybody using out there? I would love to see or know what you guys are using. And are you guys thinking about things that you're gonna put on your beach? I'm gonna have some fun things for you that you can add to your beach if you would like. So I'm just blending these colors that would be, that would be present in water, right? So our darkest colors up to, you know, more green. There's a lot of green in the sea. Sea green is a color, you know. I'm just kind of blending these out. Now I am going to wash my brush because I don't want to pull any more of that blue through in the front. I want it to be more, you know, green, more turquoisey color. And I've just used my large brush, my big brush, this whole time. You can, you know, switch brushes if you want to add some striations through there. Um, more little, you know, little juts of color. But I use the edge of, you know, just the, the side of my brush. 
to add some colors through there. To answer your question, looks like a lot of our friends are using purples. Oh, yeah. And neon colors. I like it. There's, you've got some stormy colors out there. Oh, yes. Yeah. Somebody's using all of the colors. All the colors. That's me. <laughs> Let's use all the colors. All right. So, I think I've gone as far with the water as I want to go. I throw a little bit more turquoise on there, just up front. And then I'm going to start putting some sand. So I'm going to wash my brush because I don't want to pull a lot of that green into my sand, that blue. I want it to be pretty, pretty brown. And I'm gonna start just, I'm gonna throw just one tone of brown on there. I, it's more of a tan. So if you had bottle brown, I would add um, some white and maybe a touch of yellow to it to make just like a nice, a nice sandy brown. I think some of the kits that I suggested had um, just a, a tan in there, which would be perfect. You just want something that resembles sand. You could have white sand if you wanted. You could have yellow sand. You could have pink sand. You could have pink sand. You could have whatever color sand you like. There's actually a thing called pink sand. Pink sand. Yeah? Is it like, is there a beach that has real pink sand? Yeah. Interesting. I don't know that I could contain myself if I saw a beach that had pink sand. I think yeah, I'd be so be excited. Amazing. Right? I think I'd be too excited. So I'm just filling in how much, you know, the sand that I want over here. There's a really stark line happening right here, but that's not going to stay that way. We're going to we're going to play with that later. I'm just putting my my sand on here for now. I'm just brushing back and forth to kind of even it out. And this is a super fun one, it's playful. Um, there's a lot of technique that I'll be showing you guys through it, but it's definitely not anything that you need to worry too much about. This is one you're definitely gonna wanna work at your own pace. This is not the first sunset I've ever done. This is not the first beach scene I've ever done. Um, so I want you guys to just work at your own pace, do what you like, um, You know, take what you like, leave what you don't. Take the technique um, and maybe throw it in your little mental library card catalog for later and um, just have fun with it. So I'm going back up to the sky while the sky is a little bit wet. And I'm going to throw in a little bit of yellow for my bright sun that's setting. So I'm going to go right along that little horizon line. And I'm just going to put a little bit of yellow in there and a little bit of like a hazy yellow. And these are just little tiny hatch marks that are coming back and forth just to kind of look like the sun. Haley Lisa said that the pink sand is in Hawaii. Is it? That's exciting. Thank you for helping me out. <laughs> <laughs> and Shannon would like to know what's your favorite beach? Mine? Mm, I love Sanibel Island in Florida. I love... Um, Sanibel is just mm, so pretty. And we love Clearwater Beach. We love Clearwater Beach in Florida and Sanibel. Um, I like La Jolla Beach in California. That one's gorgeous too. And I think the beaches in Maui in Hawaii are probably my favorite, but I haven't gotten, to, I've only gotten to go there once. So I don't know. I love a beach. I love a lake beach. I'll take any beach. I'm a beach girl. So. The sand is so soft in Hawaii. Oh, it is. It, it feels like powder. It doesn't feel like any other beach in the world. It's so interesting. Well, and Brandy said that Harbor Island in the Bahamas also has pink sand. Does it? We're going to have to put that on our, put it on the list, Tom. Yeah, put I it on the yeah. list. Pink sand beaches bucket list. <laughs> pink sandy beaches. <laughs> Thanks, What's the guys. last name of Brandy? <laughs> Just wondering. Oh, too I it's think, your mom. Yeah. Is it? Is it? Yeah. Oh, it's your mom. Hi. Hi, mom. Hi, mama. <laughs> Brandy is Haley's biological mom. We just get to share her. I get. To, I didn't give birth to her, but she's mine too. So, hi, Brandy. Thanks for sharing the babes with me. <laughs> Which Brandy is this? You're so cute. <laughs> 
And then we, other friends are talking about they've been to beaches with black sand. Oh, yeah, there are. Um, is it Iceland or Green? One of the two. Um, we did a really cool soil study. Greenland, wasn't it? Yeah, we did a really cool soil study with Abbott, our oldest boy, um, for school. And it, we got to look at all the different sand from beaches and soil from other places under the microscope. And one was a black sand beach, and it was so cool. So, guys, I'm just going through with some of this turquoise and, and adding a little bit. I'm just kind of putting a little bit of um, the color in different spots. I like my sunset to look like have streaks in the sky. So, if you like that look, too, you can go through and do that, too. Um, when we were mixing it really well with our brush and just kind of like thinning things out, it gave us more of a, uh, it gave us more of a just really mixed color and I wanted it to have pops of color. So I'm adding some of those colors back in. And then I'm gonna throw a little bit of coral back in here too because that turquoise and coral against each other, I really love. And we're just kinda, we're just playing. This is really like the fun part. It's just play. There's no right or wrong to it. You just add the colors as you see fit. I'm gonna add some clouds too. So I'm going to, I'm gonna use my big brush and I'm going to wash them off pretty well. And I'm gonna take some white and I'm just gonna kind of do a little bit of like a, a tapping process, a little tap, tap, tap to kind of get some billowy clouds on there. Just a little tap tapperoni. So uh, we have, Holly mentioned that some of the kits of brushes don't seem to have one that's that big in it. Do you have a tip of where maybe we could link one for? Yeah, I'll link one after. Um, this is just like a a one inch brush, uh, one inch. But I remember I'm using an eleven by fourteen canvas, so it's almost twice the size of the canvas that. I suggested for you guys the eight by 10. So you could do a three quarter inch brush. I'm gonna link you a three quarter, in, a three quarter inch and a one inch brush. Um, I'll link them in the YouTube video comments and I will link them here um, on Facebook too. So I'm just gonna throw some little, some little clouds. I like more of like the flat looking clouds, you know, that just kind of have a little billow to them. And I'm really just taking some paint and just kind of tapping and pushing it around. And then my, um, what's the word I'm looking for? My palm tree is going to come over on this side over here. So I'm not going to build a lot into there, but you could add more clouds if you liked. And you can add, um, you know, like another smaller guy up here. Just whatever you like. It's really about what the what the best beach sunset or the best beach sky looks like to you. Everybody's going to be different because we all appreciate different things about nature. So I might put one more cloud. And clouds are so easy. There's no wrong way to do a cloud because I've never seen two clouds that look the same. There are even different types of clouds. So I'm just using my big brush and just kind of adding that through there. What are you cracking up about over there, Mr. Tommy Tom? Oh, it's, it's uh, Missy's must be hungry because her stomach's <laughs> grumbling over here. It's, it's so rah, quiet rah, rah, in here rah. sometimes. You guys can hear all of our sounds. Mine's done it a few times too. Wow. Wow. You should wonder if any, anybody else can hear your stomach grumbling. It's <laughs> so funny. I'm uh, I'm taking my little, my smaller paintbrush and going back through and kind of thickening up these clouds a little bit in some of the spots where I didn't get quite as much as I wanted on there. And remember, acrylics and layers. There's no, you know, there's nothing that says you can't go back through and add stuff later. 
Um, we have friends that would like to know if they have a sponge brush. Would that work? You can. can. Paint with sponge brush? You can paint with a sponge brush. You can paint with any. I paint with my fingers a lot of times. I have um, a journal that I keep that's like a mixed media journal. And I don't know that I've ever used a brush in that journal. I use, um, I put paint straight on the page and I use a credit card and scrape it out. Um, I use my fingers. Brushes are just a tool. You, you guys use what works best for you. If you like a sponge, you get it. Just do it. Do whatever you like. All right, so I think I'm done messing around with the little sky up here. I'm going to give him some little white lines just to kind of look like wispy air. Just a little bit of something to break him up. All right, that's my happy sky. And... I'm going to leave it alone because I am going to come back in on the bottom of these clouds. I'm going to put a little touch of that coral underneath to give it some, some shadowing, like some reflection. But I'm going to do that once it's completely dry. So if you, you know, if you want to build up any of those clouds with some texture, you can tap with the brush, any kind of brush, and you can add more white on and tap and, you know, give it some texture, build more paint. Up, do whatever you like to do. We're using craft paint for these, but um, if you really love the process of painting these acrylic paintings that we do, get yourself a nice little acrylic set, um, like a basics acrylic. I have one linked for the date night um, this coming Friday for the port acrylic. It's just something that's a little bit more archival, but it has a nicer opacity, which means you can't see through as much. So with these craft paints, these are great for kids and low budget things. Um, you really can see a lot through the white because the opacity is very thin. But if you go up to a higher grade acrylic, you get a little bit more opacity. It blends a little bit easier when you're trying to make these cool transitions between colors. Um, if you really love this process, I would step it up to the next level of acrylic paint. So, all right, now we are moving on to our little ocean. I want to maybe throw a little bit more, a little bit more turquoise through this part here. Now that I see it dry, I wanna throw a little more through there and I'm gonna water them down a tiny bit to blend it so it doesn't look like a, a green stripe through the center, but I just realized I, I want I want it to look like layers of, you know, where the sand does dip down and it's lower in some spots. It just kind of makes it look a little more natural. So I'm going to add a little more green in there, a little more turquoise, and then touch up some spots I mixed on the edge. All right, so my water looks pretty much the way that I want it to. Um, I'm going to throw in some little waves um not like big waves if you guys want to do big waves um you'll just have them more rolling but i'm going to use maybe use like a a little half inch brush i'm going to take a darker blue more like you know maybe the middle of the road blue and i'm going to mix some of that back up on my palette and I'm gonna to start to make just like a little, a little line that goes across. And maybe it doesn't go across the whole thing. Maybe the, maybe the wave is just more out here. And it's just gonna be kind of like a little crooked line because waves aren't like a straight line. I mean, I guess they could be, but most of the waves I've seen aren't. And I'm just gonna make a little crooked line and I'm gonna make just a little blue underneath because that's gonna be my shadow, okay? So I'm gonna take this blue little line, I'm gonna take it across. And then you can kind of see the depth there. Hopefully you guys can see. I know it's kind of shiny from the wetness of the paint, but you can see how I'm kind of building a little bit of depth there. And then on the top of that, I'm gonna wash my brush and I'm gonna start to add a tiny bit of white. So I'm gonna take just like the corner of the same brush and I'm just gonna take and tap because this is gonna be just where the water is starting to roll over. So I'm gonna have just a little bit of it breaking. And it's just gonna be a little white taps. 
and it's like putting a little bead of paint on the top of this little blue shadow that we've created and just kind of like fuzzing it out a little bit, right? Just kind of billowing it a little bit. And then you can kind of make it fall over. You can kind of make it look like the waves kind of falling over. And then carry that kind of across. You can kind of see where the wave broke a little bit. And then he kind of is down here. And again, this is more of a, you know, advanced technique. I like to keep it fresh and lively for everybody. Some people are more into acrylic painting than others. And some people enjoy a challenge more than others. If this is not your thing, this is not your thing. And don't feel like it has to be. We're just going to kind of build some, build a little bit of sea foam into there. And then what happens behind there is that you get. that bright white at the top of kind of where the little break would be too, where he's kind of rolling. You have the very bright white because that's going to be the top. And then you'll have more, you can have more little, you know, lines as they start to kind of grow across here. And your wave could be, you know, a long wave or just kind of a, a short, it could be like one little burst. It could just look like one little tiny bit of water billowing over. Mine's kind of going across a little bit. All right, and then I'm gonna put some more breaks back here in the back. Just some more that kind of, you kind of want to mirror your sand line at this point. You don't really want to worry as much about the horizon line matching up with that. You want to kind of follow your, your beach line at this point. You can just throw some white in there, throw some more, some little breaks back there. And then the fun part, I really like to add like the sea, um, the sea spray stuff at the front. So I'm gonna take more of like a little round brush and I'm gonna get some weight in there and I'm gonna start making like little foamies and bubble stuff. And you could do like the little, the little squiggles of where the, you know, kind of where the sea washes back out. You can do some straight up and down lines like that too. And just tap and give yourself just some really fun splashes in there. So you get those fun little bubbles and the foam that hangs out at the top or at the front of the water where the water breaks. I don't love my little squiggles going out, so I'm just gonna wipe those off. And if you don't love them, you can wipe yours off too. That's the, that's the joy of acrylic. So I'm just going to keep throwing some, some little bubbles and sea spray in there and you can build it up higher if you want it to look like it's crashing, but I'm just tapping like with little dots of white. Maybe it's more sparse right here. Maybe it comes up really close here. Maybe it comes all the way up and you can see some of the sand through it. Christy said that her kids have a bunch of globs on their canvas. Is there something, a tip for that? I know you mention that every once in a while. You can, um, if they have a bunch of globs, 
you can um, pull some of that off with a paper towel. If you don't like it, you can let it dry and paint back over it. You can, um, you can smooth some of it out. It's really up to you. I mean, they're gonna learn, the older they get and the more they paint, they're gonna learn how much paint is too much paint. And um, maybe their painting is more of an abstract beach. Maybe it's, you know, if they don't, if they have way too much paint on there and they're not enjoying it, just pull some off with a bigger paintbrush um, and set it to the side, or you can, you know. Just be all Van Gogh. Yeah, very much. I mean, texture in paint is not a bad thing. You can let it dry, and then you can come back to it and paint over top of it. But, yeah, I'm just kind of throwing the paint that I'm using. I'm just kind of throwing some little speckles through here because I want my spray to look nice and thick through here. And yours can look however it looks on a beach to you. But yeah, I mean, kids are, it's gonna take a while for kids to figure out exactly how much is too much, how much, what's the right amount. That's why we're practicing. That's why I'm having you guys buy craft paint and not crazy expensive, you know, artist grade paint or even student grade paint. Student grade paint is expensive. I think my first year of art school, I spent eight or nine hundred dollars on paint. So just uh, use what you've got and learn with it. Buy cheap stuff to start. That's why I suggested earlier. If you're really into acrylic, um, there's a really cool Liquitex um, basics that I linked for the paint night for parents for Friday night. And that one, the reason I linked that is because it's archival quality and you get really nice pigments. You don't wanna do a poured acrylic with, uh, you don't wanna do a poured acrylic with craft paint. It's gonna be really matte and it's gonna be kind of, I don't know, less, less intense. And you're kind of going for those pops of color with that. So there's my foamy, there's my foamy beach. Um, I'm gonna kind of make my foam fade into the back, back there. And you guys definitely remember to work at your own pace. And if you need to watch this on the replay, do that too. We just kind of wanna put the texture in there the way you like it. I'm just brightening up my little wave break a little bit up here. But yeah, and you know, perspective too. You're not gonna see as much detail the further you go away because that's further from our eyes, right? So it might be more like, you know, little squiggly lines, more. Just subtle. All right, so that is my, you know, beach spray. All right, so I am going to touch up a little bit of um, pink under these clouds to show you guys what I mean before I forget. I'm just going to put a little bit of pink at the bottom of these clouds. It's just going to kind of make them look like they're real clouds. Clouds don't typically have all one color at the bottom. They reflect, they're just little droplets of water which reflect too. So we're just bringing some color into the bottom of that cloud. So I'm throwing one of the colors from my sky into that cloud. I chose to do some of the coral. <laughs> I just saw Sean, Sean's commenting is uh using comments, or he's answering comments over at his house through his computer for us. And he, he says hi to Carol. Aunt Carol's on here. Oh, hi, Aunt Carol. <laughs> he asked where the Rattlesnake Inn is. The Rattlesnake <laughs> Inn. That's what, So our family, we have like Possum Palace, Rattlesnake Inn. It's just kind of like the names of, I mean, that's what we write on coolers for potlucks and things. So Rattlesnake Inn is Aunt Carol's house. <laughs> that's so funny. Okay, All so right. I've seen that on here before and I didn't know what it was. 
the yeah. rattlesnake in. That's so funny. Yeah, that's my Aunt Carol's house. Aunt Carol's house. All right. So let's throw a, a little palm tree in here. I'm going to have one coming off the side. Haley, you got a lot of fans out there. People love your work. Yeah, she's doing so great. All right. I only put a tan on here, but I kind of want to make my palm tree base a little bit darker. So how we're going to... you got a lot of people asking. You mentioned palm trees. Everybody's excited <laughs> yep. to palm tree. doing a palm tree. Guys, what's a beach without a palm tree, I guess, you know? So I'm going to throw a little bit of black into this tan. And I'm just going to make a deeper color so it kind of stands out from the sand that I'm drawing it on. So I just put a little dot of black in the tan that I already had out on my palette. And I'm going to take a flat brush and I'm just going to make like a little, little guy coming off the side here. He's just going to, he's just going to hang out. He's going to be coming in from the side, a little curvy. All right, that's my trunk. And I may have gotten a little more paint on here than I wanted because I make mistakes too. But you know what? We let it, we let it dry and then we'll highlight and do what we want to do. So um, if you want to draw with a pencil to give yourself some nice guidelines, you can do that as well. Um, for a palm tree, I'm just going to draw kind of an X. Sean's cracking up. Sean's cracking up about <laughs> the rattlesnake in. Yeah, it's good stuff. I'm going to draw kind of like an X. with one little coming through. So it's gonna be like a like a snowflake, an X with a little line down. It doesn't have to be perfect, but that's gonna be how I'm going to remember which way my leaves are going, my palm fronds. So I'm gonna take another flat brush. I'm gonna take a smaller flat brush and I'm going to take my darkest green that I want to use. So if I want to use like a, a brighter, darker green in here, maybe I mix a little black with it. I want to do my deepest, darkest green first because then I can highlight everything else. But I want to get my brush pretty saturated and then scrape it to where my, my brush isn't loaded with tons of paint to where I still have that nice flat tip of my brush. And then I'm just going to go in and I'm going to give these tiny little streaks. Remember when we did the sloth and we just kind of grab and pull? And that's just, we're going to do this over and over. We're going to take a little roll of paint on the tip of our brush to where it's still flat and you can see. And we're just going to go over and over and over and we're going to do just little tiny hatches in here. And then gravity being what it is, it's going to make some of these, the bigger palm fronds, kind of fall down. Okay, and we can, we can play with that. And maybe this one, he's over on the side and you don't see his on the other side. Maybe you're just seeing the side view of his. So we can kind of angle those down. And we have just, you know, the edges, the side of that one. And if you feel like you got too thick and you don't have much distinction between the branches, don't worry. We've got plenty of options to highlight those out. I'm actually going back through mine, my first guy, and making him a little bit thicker. Do, 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 do. And then you can do that with all six of the little branches that you threw in there. Those are just actually like the veining, what holds the little palm tree together. And you do kind of want it to like extend over onto your water. You don't want it to look like he's just like standing up there in the middle of nowhere. So you want to make sure that it comes down all the way down. You can have a crazy, crazy little palm frond or two. It's just kind of sticking out. And these are just so organic and so simple. We're just taking little hatches and just going back and forth. There's no right or wrong way to do these guys. If you wind up doing them to where they look like big petals, that's okay too. No two palm trees look the same. I've seen palm trees that I thought were like completely dead before that were still out on the beach making people happy. So... <laughs> I mean, you do you. With a little sprout. Yeah, with like one sap. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> So just get some, you know, 
get some green on there. And then you can start going through with a brighter green and giving him some little highlights. So I'm gonna take that brighter green and I'm just gonna hit where, and maybe I got a little too much green on that brush. And you just kind of go through and just hit some highlights. You could do that with green, you could do it with turquoise, you can do it with white, whatever you like. You just wanna give those leaves some dimension, okay? So we'll just throw some, throw some little green highlights in there, make them look alive. Maybe you're only seeing the highlights on one side of that leaf. Maybe you see them all. You can redo exactly what you did. You don't have to. But you just want to throw some more color in there just to kind of bring into life a little bit. So yeah, that's my, that's my happy little palm tree. Happy little trees. <laughs> <laughs> Did Bob Ross say happy little palm trees? Happy little palm trees. You know, I think he would have. <laughs> I feel like he would have. Speaking of Bob Ross, he loved to talk to trees and animals. And I think I have enough time to throw a happy little crab in there for you. So if you Which would great. like. You had so many people channeling your inner crab that you plan on doing. <laughs> so many people are like, what about the crab? Bring the crab. What about a crab? Yeah. So Here I'm going to hit, I'm going to hit this um, You're making little. making people very happy right now. Yeah, good. <laughs> I'm going to hit this little palm tree with some, with some highlights here just so that I don't forget about them. I want to show you guys. I'm just taking one tiny little bit of white and then I'm thickening up this base over here from where I made him kind of wonky. I'm just going to thicken him up a little bit. And then you can um, throw black on there too for shadowing or shading. And you can throw some texture in there to kind of show what his little base would look like. But I'm just thickening that up and throwing some white on there. And maybe I could throw some white in there too, just to show you guys like a little bit of highlights. I could sit here and play all day. Like I could paint this one little beach scene all day. And if that's what is speaking to your soul, let it fly because some of my favorite paintings are ones that I just got lost in. So um, do whatever feels fun to you. If you feel like you're done, sometimes um, somebody has to tell me to put the brush down because I will go a little overboard too. So, you know, just do what feels right. All right, so my crab. I'm gonna take, I'm gonna get rid of this crazy long brush and I'm just gonna take a tiny, tiny little liner brush and I'm gonna throw a little crab on here and I'm gonna start with a red body and then I'll probably accent him a little bit with coral too, just to give him some bright. So he's gonna be, he's gonna be kind of like a little dome. He's gonna look like a, a turtle shell or like a little, a little kiss without the humps on top. He's just gonna be like a little football, a red football, a sharper potato, if you will, a lemon. So I'm gonna make his little, his little oval body. I'm gonna let that dry for a second. And then I'm gonna give him some little legs. One, two, three legs on that side. And maybe three little legs on that side. And then I'm gonna give him some little pinchers, okay? So we'll give him a little arm that comes up and then a thumb a thumb pincher and another little crescent over here that's like his hand pincher. All right, so we're gonna do that again. Give him a little arm, a little arm stump over here. And then I'm gonna give him like a moon over here. It's gonna be more like a little curvy moon and then his little thumb right here, okay? And he's like chop chop. He's like, what's up? You get so much love right now. Everybody's <laughs> loving it. Yay! Lots of hearts, he's lots a of happy, hearts. he's a happy guy. He's a happy crab. He's not a crabby crab. He's just hanging out. He's like, he looks like he's like ready to like dive into the ocean. Like, yeah. It reminds um, me of like finding Nemo. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. Mine, 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 mine. mine. <laughs> um, so 
normally I would let this dry a little bit more before I put the pink on. Um, but I want to show you how. So you might want to let yours dry a little bit more. But I'm going to give him more of like a pink belly. I'm just going to throw some pink under there to kind of highlight him. And then I'm going to throw a little bit of pink around the outside of his hands just to show like some reflection. And then kind of like, kind of like a little, a pink line, kind of like halfway to make him look more like a little burger that shows his little pink belly. And then his eyes aren't exactly just sitting like flat on his face. So I'm gonna kind of make two little spots that look like maybe little rectangles that would be like re the reflection of what's holding his little eyes up. Cause they're kind of on little posts. And then I'm going to just take some black and I'm gonna go doop. And I'm gonna tap that black over and over until his eyes are as big as I like. There's one. And there's two. So his eyes aren't exactly the same size right now because I'm working on wet paint. So I could always go back over and do it again later. And then once he's completely dry, I could show a little tiny, like I could do like a little black mouth, like beep. Tommy, you can zoom on that guy if you want. Kristen wants to know, is this the place where you met your Manny the Manatee? <laughs> You know what, guys? I did meet a manatee out in the bay, but it was in Clearwater. So, you know, I didn't have any red crabs charging at me in Clearwater, but maybe. I think the beach lives in my heart. So, <laughs> yeah. And then I could just kind of, you know, throw some dark shading under there, under his little legs. But yeah. You guys, that's a beach scene. Um, you can throw some little black tiny little black speckles through here to kind of make it look more. You could have like the little the little crab tracks back here, throw some little, you know, just some little black tiny dots to break up that sand a little bit. You could build a little sand castle in there. You've already got the, you've already got the brown from it. So you could draw just like a little turret and have a little, do, do, do. Somebody left a sand castle for the crab. Throw just a little, little sand castle in there. Oh, hello. And the cool thing about it being a sand castle is that it doesn't have to be really, you know, it's just kind of rustic looking. You have a little window cut out there. Have a little arch. I love a little sand castle in my painting. You could have another little door over here, or a little window. One of our friends said he's a crab tato. A crab tato! <laughs> he is. Um, I could throw a little throw a tiny little, you know, a little stick uh, flag like we all put out on our on our little sand castles. Yeah. It feels like the beach to me. And then I can take a little bit of white and do some highlights on them, still with my teeny tiny liner brush. Just a tiny dusting of white across there. Just to make him look, you know. Like a little little sand castle. Maybe that's his little house. Maybe that's Crab Tato's house. <laughs> All right. But yeah, that's our that's our little beach scene. I cannot wait to see what you guys come up with because it's just so fun. You could add all the things. You could put a mermaid tail out here. Maybe I'll add some things and uh, show you the, add something for you guys to spy on the finished piece when we get um, when we post him today later this afternoon. See what you guys uh, see what you guys can see that I might have added. Maybe it'll be like an eye spy. I added something in there for you. 
But yeah, that's it. We are going to talk about our winners. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Not crab dinner. That would make him so sad. <laughs> winner, winners from the week. So I'm going to move this guy out of the way just for a minute. So Missy so generously donated one of these little monsters. Um, so we have this little dude and it is going to young and free y'all on Instagram for their image of paper marbling. It was so sweet. And I'm pretty sure little, little guy or gal has a stitch badness level t-shirt on in that one which <laughs> is a personal favorite of mine so reach out to us or if we don't hear from you we will reach out to you young and free y'all on instagram and we will um, get with you about how to receive your little monster from missy and the facebook winner is melissa cox she shared with us her daughter's um little tooth fairy pillow and soil composition of the grasslands that she made. That was um, from Thursday's sewing project. And she made the tooth fairy pillow for her cousin, you guys. It was just so sweet. So we are going to be sending her this happy little um, choose kindness t-shirt that's inspired by um, the book Wonder or the movie Wonder, if you've seen that too. Wonder was a personal favorite in our family. So we have um, designed this one and we give it to pretty much every teacher at Scythe Help Elementary. They all they all wind up with one if they have my kids in class. So <laughs> that's been a popular one. But yeah, Melissa, reach out to us and you can get your t-shirt mailed out to you. You guys, I can't wait to see what you made today. Keep using the hashtag made with Mick Harper. Um, we're going to have two more prizes again this week because we just love seeing what you guys have and we are going to keep sharing the love. Um, you may be Manny's pick for the day or his favorite from the roundup for the week. Um, just use that hashtag made with Mick Harper. And um, we just really appreciate you guys hanging with us. Thanks so much for being here. Thanks for your generous donations. I hope you guys saw that we have started the little um, community art cupboard. I posted some pictures on Instagram and here on Facebook yesterday of our beautiful friend Susan making our cupboard for us that we are going to stock with art supplies so that people in our community here in Milford and Cincinnati, Ohio, so that they can um, you know, create art even if they don't have the resources or the supplies on hand. So we are so excited about that. Your donations continue to help all of us that are producing um, this, these videos and this content for you while our shops are closed and um, to help others with this little community project that we're doing. So we're so excited about it. The ways you can help are Venmo at Tabitha McClung and paypal.me slash Manor. We appreciate you guys so much. Tomorrow we're going to be doing upcycled robots. So for that, you're just going to want to grab um, whatever you have in the recycling bin. If you have tin cans, it's going to be something really cool to use for their little bodies. Uh, bottle caps, whatever looks interesting really. You could use like a milk carton. The things you really don't want to use are thin plastic. If you're going to use um, like um, a water bottle or something like that, the hot glue, even the low temperature hot glue that we're going to use could kind of melt that plastic a little bit. So we're going to want to try to stay more towards sturdy items, cardboard, things of that nature. Um, basic craft supplies like your pipe cleaners, pom-poms, felt or foam, googly eyes, um, that stuff is going to be fun to add to the robot and a hot glue gun. So parents, um, if this is one that you can't break away from work to do, you might just watch us on the replay on YouTube. You're definitely gonna wanna have an adult helper with the hot glue guns, unless you have older kids that have practiced and are confident using that. So even the low temperature hot glue guns can burn a finger. Um, just, you know, use caution, use your judgment on that. But yeah, we are looking forward to making some robots with you tomorrow. I'm super excited about that project, but I can't wait to see what you guys have made. Remember to share with us. We'll pick some favorites to share tonight. And we will see you all tomorrow for our upcycled robots. Miss, did you one, have a question? One, they want one more close-up of your crab. One more close-up of the crab. We can do it. We can do it. There you go. <laughs> there he is. Crab tato. <laughs> 
All right, guys. Thank you so much for hanging with us, and we will see you tomorrow. You guys have a great day. Take care of each other. Bye.